Hello there, my name is Elsa and in this video I will be showing you how to use OpenPrush. What is OpenPrush? OpenPrush is an open source project management application. OpenPrush allows us to create Gantt charts, network diagrams, WBS and RBS charts, and reports. OpenPrush is a free alternative to other paid software project management applications. Originally, it was supported by Serena, but OpenPrush is no longer supported by them. Questions and online help can be found at the OpenPrush forum. Now that you have a brief idea of what OpenPrush is, let's take a look at a demo of the software. To start using OpenPrush, first you will need to install it. The link is in the description. Once you have installed it, double click on the desktop icon or click Start. Go to the OpenPrush folder and click on the OpenPrush program. The first thing that we'll see is the welcome windows prompting us to choose between opening an existing application and creating a new project. So let's go ahead and create a new project. First we need to provide a name. For the sake of the demo and to make things more understandable, let's assume that we are a software company and we are creating a mobile application for an amusement park. With that in mind, let's pick an appropriate name. Now we need to provide the name of the manager. For the dates of the project, we can choose between two options, forward schedule and non-forward schedule. If we choose forward schedule, we need to provide a start date. If we pick the other option, we need to provide an end date. Let's pick forward schedule. Now let's say that we need to close our project and finish it later. To save it, we can click the Save button or click on File, then Save. We will now close the project. To reopen the project, we open OpenProject, but this time we will click the Open, Pro the open Project button. And then we select the project that we want. If we close the welcome page by mistake, we, all, we can always create a new project by clicking on the new project button or open an existing one by clicking the open project button. With this, we conclude part one of the tutorial. Next, we will see the Gantt chart feature. The main feature of OpenPrush is the section that you currently see on the screen. To the left side, we have a list of tasks needed for the project and to the right side, we have the Gantt chart corresponding to those tasks. In the left panel, we have many columns that we choose from. To add or hide them, just click on any column and pick the choice you want in the context menu. To add a column, click on Insert Column and then pick the one you want to add. To hide a column, right click on the column you want to hide and on the context menu, click on hide. Let's create some tasks. This will be our first task. Let's create two more, two more tasks, which will be the subtasks of the first one. By default, the duration of the, of the task is one day. To make the last two tasks the subtask of the first one, we need to indent them. To indent the last two tasks, select those two rows, right-click and in the context menu, choose Indent. The first task font has changed to bold and the duration has been grayed out and can be changed. That's because this duration will be calculated based on the subtasks. We can also collapse this task to hide the subtask or expand it to show them. We can further indent a task to create a subtask inside of another subtask. We can also revert this by selecting the task, right clicking on it and choosing outdent. In the count chart, we can see how tasks and subtasks have different shapes to differentiate them. Now let's focus our attention to the duration column. Like we mentioned before, the default duration is one day. 
Let's change the duration of the tasks we just created. For the first one, we will put 7 days. For the second one, let's change the start and the end date. The start date will be November 21st. I want to point out something curious about this software. As you can see, the start date and the end date are three days apart, but the duration is one day. The reason is because November 22nd and November 23rd land on a weekend, and the duration is based on working days. Let's change the end date to November 28th. Now that we changed the duration of the subtask, we see that the duration of the parent task has also changed. That's because the duration of the parent task is calculated by the duration of each children. In the count chart, we can see how the timeline has been modified. We can also change the dates and the duration in the count chart itself. Just move the mouse over to the corner of the rectangle representing the task until it becomes a double arrow. Click and drag to adjust the time. Notice how the parent task also adjusts. Another feature of OpenPrush is that we can assign a priority or value to tasks. The values range between 0 and 1000. The default is 500. By using this feature, we can choose which task should be done first. The last feature I will be talking about is the predecessors. In real life, some tasks need to be completed before moving to the next one. This feature allows us to do just that. To indicate that a task needs to be completed before another one, just click on the task that needs the prerequisite and indicate the number of the previous task in the predecessor column. More than one task can be selected. To indicate more than one pre-task, separate them by semicolon. Let's create another task. For this new task that we created, we're going to indicate that task number two and number three are prerequisites. In the count chart, we can see an arrow pointing from the predecessor task to the last task. We can do this directly in the count chart. Let's delete the predecessors in the left panel. We will add them again using the count chart. As we have seen so far, many of the features can either be done in the list of tasks as well as in the count chart. Finally, I want to show you another alternative to perform the activities we have done so far. In this demo, we have interacted with the software directly in the list of tasks or in the Gantt chart. Alternatively, we can double-click on any task to show the task information window. In the task information window, we can indicate the task name, duration, start and end date, predecessors, successors, and much more. With this, we conclude part 2 of the tutorial. For the next part, I will be talking about resources. For this section, I will discuss about resources. To manage the resources of this project, click on the Resources button or press for F1. Here I have a list of resources that I had added before for the purpose of this video. To add a new resource, click on an empty row and type the name of the resource. We have two types of resources, Material and Work. Let's pick work for this resource since we are adding the name of a person. We can add more details about the resource like its email, initials, and group. We can have more than one resource in the same group. We can also add salary information. Finally, let's add the working hours. We have three choices, standard, 24 hours and night shift. 
Let's pick a standard. There are many more columns to choose from in the resources panel. To add them, you just need to follow the same procedure we use in part 2. Now that we have the list of resources that we want, let's go back to the account chart. We can assign resources to the task that we have here. We have different options. We can type the name directly or double click on the task, click on the resource tab, then on the assigned resource button and then choose the resource that we want. We can assign more than one resource to the same task. After selecting the resource, we can see that the resource group has been filled in based on the group the resource was assigned to. Now let's talk about calendars. Like I demonstrated before, tasks will only count during working days. That's because the calendar is of type standard. We can modify this. To change the type of calendar, double click on the task you want to change. Then go to the Advanced tab. Under Task Calendar, let's pick 24 hours. Now, if we want, we can start and finish a task in a weekend, which will also be counted to calculate the duration of the task. However, if we assign a resource with a base calendar of type standard, OpenBrush will take into account the calendar of the resource instead of the calendar of the task, unless we indicate to ignore the calendar of the resource. With this, we have finished part 3 of the tutorial. For the last session of this video, I will be talking about the different charts OpenProj offers on the report feature. I have added more tasks to our project. For this last session, I will be talking about charts and reports. The first chart we will see is Network Diagram. This network diagram is very useful in showing the order of the tasks needed for this project. The order will be from top to bottom and from left to right. The tasks that are represented by parallelograms are parent tasks, and the tasks that are to the right are the children tasks. In this diagram, we can move tasks around. We can also indicate that a task is a prerequisite of another task. The second chart we will see is the WBS chart or Grant Breakdown Structure. By using this chart, it is easier for us to see the breakdown of tasks and subtasks. In this chart, we can also add and remove dependencies. If we add or remove by mistake, we can always undo the changes by clicking on Edit, then Undo, or pressing the combination of Ctrl V. The last chart we will see is the RPS chart, or Resource Breakdown Structure. In this chart, we can see the resources assigned to this project, as well as the cost that each one represents. Finally, we can generate different reports of the project. We have four types of reports. Project details, resource information, task information, and who does what. With this, we have concluded part four of the tutorial. This will be the final part of our video. As you can see in the list of tasks, the main tasks are called sprints. I have done this purposely to show how this tool can be used for agile methodologies in software engineering. Even though OpenProj is an older software, many of its features are common for most project management methodologies. With this, we conclude our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye!